where we are heading is better than anything you could ever imagine. It is the transformation. Everybody is in a cocoon. We're being made into butterflies, but first the caterpillar turns into goo. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. Today I'll be talking with Dr. Christian Northrup, a true leader, visionary, and pioneer in the field of women's medicine and health, and the author of many brilliant bestsellers, including her latest re-release, a New York Times bestseller, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about the secret hidden powers of women's bodies, how to help them to heal, and what it means for the world today. That plus we'll talk about corpus callosums. The power of nitric oxide, gotcha. <laughs> the emotional digestive system, the magic wonder of tears, the importance of being the queen of Sheba, and what in the world I only see normal women has to do with <laughs> anything. <laughs> so welcome back to the show, Chris. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine, absolutely. Yes. Awesome, awesome. So I figured I might as well start things with a flamethrower today. So I'm going to read a quote from the late feminist writer Adrian Rich, who wrote, I know of no woman for whom the body is not a fundamental problem. You say having internalized our bodies as a problem is at the heart of women's health. What do you mean? Yes. And what I mean by that is if you think about it, how many generations were told that their menstrual cycle was the curse? Uh, even now, if we look in third world countries, one of the number one reasons why girls drop out of school, of course now everyone's dropped out of school, but the number one <laughs> reason is their periods and they don't have the sanitary products that we have in this country. And so let's just, you know, we start with, the cycle that is responsible for all life on earth. Think about this. And that's been called the curse. Or when women are ready to have a baby, their mothers have said to them, because I had patients who said this, now you'll see how I suffered with you. Um, so I mean, there's a sort of a long history of the denigration of the female body. So in the 80s, what did we do? we decided the only answer to this was the early feminist, it's not the early feminist movement, but about the third uh, wave of the feminist movement in the 70s was, okay, well, we just be like men. We get, the, we get the big shoulder pads. That was the style in the 80s. And female athletes, like elite athletes, they knew that they were training properly when their periods went away like when they literally became amenorrheic. Yeah. So the more like a man you could be, the better. And when I was uh, being interviewed for my residency at New England Medical Center, the chief of the program looks at me and he goes, you're not gonna have a baby, are you? Like the worst possible thing I could have done was get pregnant and have a baby. Because to this day, Michael, nobody, very few companies, have solved the problem of what do you do when one of your main workers uh, needs childcare, has a baby, needs, needs to spend those crucial first months bonding with the baby that makes such a difference for that child's health for the rest of their life. But we haven't figured out how to do it. And the United States is one of the only industrialized countries yep. that makes no attempt to help young women with children, even though during World War II, interestingly, they quickly ramped up because women were going into the industry to make airplanes and bombs and all that. So the government created child care centers 24-7 so that women could work every shift. And when you picked up your child at the end of your workday, you also had a hot dinner waiting to take home. They wow. did that quickly. And then, you know, when the men came home, oh, okay, all right, now you women, you got to stay home and be Susie Homemaker. And then, you know, we got all the shows like Leave It to Beaver. And, um, you know, <laughs> we're, we're in another stage now. I, I was reading an article just a few days ago that said that when the movie Nine to Five came out, it was radical 40 years ago, but things aren't actually any better today. <laughs> 
<laughs> actually, you know, they, they are better. I'll tell you how they're better. Yes. The number one group starting a new business is a woman. Woo-hoo. And many, many people are doing business from home. Of course, right now, we're in what I call the great awakening, mm-hmm. where we, we will not be going back to the way things were before. And quite frankly, the way things were before for many, many, many people was not okay. I mean, you know, like this, the air pollution, and I can remember because I've done so much traveling with my work, going to Seattle, going to Houston, going all over, and saying in every place, I am so glad I don't live here, there's just too much traffic. I can't imagine being stuck in this traffic every single day. Now, you know, we, we look at L.A., and a friend of mine just sent me this wonderful little picture of a bunch of goslings in um, uh, Alameda, California. And she said, we've never seen anything like this so where nature's taking over. Now, we could. We could equate the feminine and the female body with nature, with intuition, And as we are restructuring the planet in this great awakening time, we will be moving, I I totally believe, into a new new earth. I'm feeling a sense of community Mm -hmm. that's greater than it was in, let's say, November, December. There's this rising up, and, and that's... Okay, so we have studies showing with women, when women are under stress, they do a thing called tend and befriend. Mm -hmm. And that means they call other women and they get together. And, you know, and that was all discovered by a a scientist who worked in a lab and noticed that the females would all gather together and help each other. The guys (laughs) would go out alone and drink. So the feminine thing is to know, you know, what heals people. And the body knows this. So I always like to point out that when the, uh, when the sperm goes toward the egg at ovulation, the egg chooses which sperm to let in. And then if the sperm has a few little defects, the egg DNA fixes the defects on the sperm, which is why I say, you know, the married men tend to look better because they have someone who's always upgrading their appearance. <laughs> That explains it for me, except for my hair today. (laughs) Well, that's okay. And um, at this point in time, right, when you can't get a haircut, who can get a haircut? I I think we just, um, I think I might be able to get a haircut later this month. I don't know. Um, But anyhow, the egg wisdom also then, when the sperm gets together with the egg at ovulation, uh, the egg supplies the nutrients for those original cell divisions that result in what's called a blastocyst, which is the very beginning of a human. And then for three days, those, th- that fertilized egg goes down the fallopian tubes. And then about the third day or so begins to embed into the uterus and it begins to create the placenta. Now, what is the placenta? It is an organ that includes both the baby and the mother. In, it's in an immunologically very unusual space because the body, the female, the mother's body does not make antibodies against her baby. And no one really totally understands that. But I love this organ of nourishment that is the placenta because it's a whole organ. And I always, when I delivered babies, would show this to women and where the baby was and where the cord is and what this was doing because I like to say, that women do best, so do men, by the way, with a placenta of support around them, always. People don't do well individually. So uh, for those people who really have been locked away for a while here, you know, we, we need to send divine love because we're not meant to be separated from each other in that way. Is there a way, I'm always thinking, when we talk about the part of the body, I'm correlating it. My big theme lately has been humanity is one body. And and we are individual cells of this human organism. Yes. And so I'm wondering both what is what is the placenta of humanity A and what are the emotions associated with this? Because the body speaks to us. Each organ has something to share, something to say. 
Yes, it does. Yeah. And that would be, you know, in traditional Chinese medicine, the kidneys are fear, uh, the liver's anger, you know, like that. The lungs are grief. I mean, that's on the low end of the spectrum. And then on the high end, the lungs are inspiration, right? Um, so what we have to do, I think the placenta is the earth herself. So you know, there's all this information on grounding. Standing on the earth, 20 minutes on the earth, decreases cellular inflammation, the root cause of all chronic degenerative diseases. It decreases it by 20%. So if we were just sitting on the earth more, standing on the earth more, or if you can't, you, you hug a tree or put your hand around a branch of a tree. That will ground you. This literally changes the flow of electrons in your body. So, and then also think about this one. As you've seen this, the most nurturing person in a home, and it could be a man, it's usually a woman, is where the kids want to be, it's where the husband wants to be, it's where the dog wants to be, like you're making dinner, and the dog is always right there in the efficiency triangle of the kitchen. The kids are right there. Or if you have a party in the future, we will have these again. Uh, you <laughs> People always want to be Somewhere in the kitchen. over yeah. the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that movie, by the way, with uh, Renee Zellweger. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> Very cool. I haven't caught that one yet. I read all about it in advance, but I haven't caught it. Uh, the acting job is beyond anything you can even imagine. And she sang all of her own stuff. It was unbelievable. Yeah. But tragic as anything, yes. because let's talk about women's wisdom. Because one of the things that you brought up is, um, I only see normal women. Okay. So we look at the true story of Judy Garland. Mm -hmm. She was drugged by the movie people. She was sexually abused by her um, producers or whoever they were, and I think also by Mickey Rooney. Oh, wow. And so here she gets to, you know, she's, she's literally got this amazing voice and talent. And then what happened back then is the actors and actresses were owned by Hollywood. Every step of their career was orchestrated, and many, particularly the young ones like Judy Garland was, were abused really abused. And that's why she could get to the age of 47 and die, you know, with her teeth all not good anymore. Um, it's so tragic. So that is a perfect example of what I saw. I mean, that's a writ large example. But what I would see in my office is women would come in, they'd sit on the couch, they'd start to cry. I'd say, what's going on in your life? Because what I did was I correlated what was going on in the physical body with what was going on in their life. And to this day, the most accurate diagnostic tool is a good history. What, you know, what was going on the year before this happened or whatever. Lawrence Lachan, way back with his cancer studies, showed that you could often predict when the stress began that got the balance of the microbiome and of the cells. What, what threw it off balance yeah. really is what we're talking about. Yeah. And it's interesting because when you're talking about history, you're not talking about a medical history. You're talking what yep. happened in your life. That's exactly, which is what your work is. That's what your work is. And, and what we need to know is that what is going on in your life is translated seamlessly to what happens in your body and the beliefs that you have about your body. So if you have been sexually abused by a relative starting at the age of seven or eight and you're told, don't tell anyone or I'll kill you, you think that might have some effect on the physical body? And I was hearing this from middle class, middle income women in a small town in Maine. And my colleagues said to me, we only see normal women. You see all the nutbags. You see everyone who's like, they're making it up or they're mentally ill or whatever. So when the Harvey Weinstein thing came out in October of 2017, 
I was on vacation in Florida. I was a woman obsessed. I do not follow the mainstream media for anything except maybe movie reviews. And I was transfixed. I read every article from the New York Times, everything I could find, because for me, you see, this was validating. And in order to heal, a wound has to be validated. So suddenly, we had the whole planet validating the fact that so many women were are abused and that Harvey Weinstein had been doing this for 30 years. Then we go on to Jeffrey Epstein and what he's been doing and, and Bill Cosby and, you know, uh, Kevin Spacey. And it's all, it's all coming up so that finally the feminine principle of nurturing and intuition and caring can finally be validated so that we can come up with something like partnership between the masculine and the feminine. Because trust me, it did not do women any good to become men. It, it really didn't. I tried. <laughs> My guess is if we rolled back that, that it, consciousness is always expanding, awareness is always growing. So it's not that we want to go back in time quite literally 5,000 plus years but there were more matriarchal or balanced societies that my guess were thriving, thriving in the arts, thriving in the humanities. My guess is, dare I say, thriving with health, that we're living a very different way. That's exactly right. We have a lot of data on this, like 30,000 years, the vast majority of time on planet Earth. The female body was honored as sacred. And so you see all these goddess figures in Turkey and in old Europe, and they were simply depicting the ripeness, the juiciness of God the mother, as it were. And they were now, of course, every anthropologist, every archaeologist carries within him or her their own cultural bias. So they were just seen as like the Venus of Willendorf, they were just seen as fertility figures. Eh, you know, eh, someone wanted to get pregnant, they carried that around in their pocket. No, that was the whole cosmology and the work of Maria Gambudis, uh, a Lithuanian archaeologist who spoke 17 languages, uh, was all compiled in a book called Through the Goddess. And the person who did her illustrations, Patricia Rice, worked at our center as a therapist. And so she is the one who I would be doing this and I'd, with, with patients. Let's say you had somebody who had, oh, you know, chronic pelvic pain or eight vaginal infections in the space of a year. So I would send them to Patricia and then she would do the in-depth, the in-depth therapeia, she called it. And then all the stories emerged. And that's how I began to put the two things together because Patricia had worked with Maria Gimbutas, had all that background about the goddess cultures. And now what's exciting is we see that coming up in the younger generation of, uh, you know, millennials and even younger, young women who no longer have that shame, you know, because their mothers changed it. I mean, the thing that's fun for me is that in this current version of Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, the, the very first editions, 1994. Mothers gave that to their daughters before going off to college or graduating from high school. Now, those same daughters are entering menopause. So it's, it's um, we've had time for the message to trickle down, you see, because it takes a while, yeah. often takes one to two generations. What's the power of naming? Because you used the word validated earlier. Yes, yes. Okay. Someone needs to say, that happened to you. And I have, I don't believe this is in the book, but the work of Eckhart Tolle on the pain body is so profound, because he points out that the, the pain body is a semi autonomous being that feeds, from, it feeds off negativity and fear. But if you stay present with it, if you're just present with you know, when you get enraged or you get really fearful and you just stay present, then you literally um, are no longer feeding the pain body and it dissolves. 
It just dissolves. And I think right now what we could say is that there's this giant pain body of humanity that we're having to be present with so that it just dissolves. But, but someone has to say, that happened to you. I'm so sorry that happened to you. When they say you are crazy and you're making it up, you, you know, we don't exist in a bubble. If you're a little kid and someone says you're crazy, get over it, go cry in a pillow, we don't want to hear you, which is very common. I'll give you something to cry about. There, yeah, yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. So I think there's this sort of collective pain body because also, as Eckhart says, we not only have our own pain body, but there's the pain body of being born a woman, or there's a pain body of being Jewish, or a pain body of whatever it is, um, being black. There's all these different legacies, and each of us actually inherits that pain body, often from the generation before. So with women, what we're doing here is we're dissolving a pain body that's 5,000 years old. As Ann Wilson Chafe used to say, the original sin of being born wom a woman, being born female, is not redeemable by works. And the addiction of choice, for those who don't feel worthy, is workaholism. So now, at this very moment, we have all these women who are home, responsible for meals, snacks, cooking, cleaning, and often working full-time from home. It's impossible. Something's got to go. I'm seeing both sides of things. I'm seeing women who are, and from what I have understand, some women are starting their workday between 6.30 and 7, and then still continuing because now they're plugged in 24-7 past 6.30 or 7. That, to me, is beyond the breaking point. Something gets to change. And then there's the reverse side of it. Women who have no work to do at all, who are also attaching their self-worth to my doingness, that are getting yes. the flip side of that same coin. Exactly right. And everything is a balance, right? So we know in the body, the balance has to be parasympathetic, sympathetic, parasympathetic, rest, restore, sympathetic, fight, flight, freeze. And many of us are in fight, flight, freeze. I talked to a woman recently and she said, I am absolutely addicted to the news and I can't seem to help myself. But it, it's created that way. I mean, in a smartphone, they know that every like on a Facebook post or whatever gives you a little hit of dopamine. So it literally hijacks your brain. And that's why, you know, before we go to bed, oh God, I got to watch one more YouTube and, you know, maybe someone else will tell me what's going on so that I can feel safe. When in fact, the whole title, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, is to tap into this presence, this beingness of I'm okay, that stillness inside the peace which passeth understanding. How do we start to tune into our bodies? You literally can just close your eyes and then feel the beingness, feel the, the life force in your body. So you might start with your hands where you feel a, a, just that aliveness. You sense the tingling in your hands. And you notice that energy flows where attention goes. So you can put your attention in your right hand and you can get the blood flow to increase just by thinking about that. And then you can switch over to your left hand and you feel the tingling grow there. And then at the same time, you've got to be breathing through your nose, in through your nose and out through your nose because breathing through your mouth is a stress response and it literally will increase the stress hormones in your body, which lead to cellular inflammation, which lead to susceptibility to disease. So we just start with being present. I also love guided visualization, like we can put our, no matter where you're standing or sitting, put your feet on the floor or the ground, 
and imagine roots going down, down, down into the center of the earth. And then imagine that there's a root system going out around each foot, about five or six feet out. And then those roots going down. So you are so grounded and protected. And there, now we're all grounded. And then you can open up the seventh chakra on top of your head and bring in divinity, bring in your spirit, bring in your soul. And now you're all connected up. So that's one way we could do it. That feels <laughs> good. I can't help but thinking as you're going to the nose, Patrick McKeown and, and the uh, Oxygen Advantage. Oh, yeah. Tell yes. me tell me about nitric oxide because you brought a whole nother chi learning to it. Yeah. Yeah, that was really interesting to me. When I learned about nitric oxide, um, a guy named Fareed Mirad won the Nobel Prize for discovering this. And it is a gas, the acronym is NO, mm -hmm. nitric oxide, except that it's really a YES, yes. <laughs> and it's produced by the endothelial unicellular lining of every blood vessel in the body, which means the lining of the blood vessels is just one cell layer thick and things go in and out of your blood vessels, but this is produced by a healthy endothelium mm -hmm. and it increases circulation, but it does more than that. A high nitric oxide level also is the uber neurotransmitter so that it balances dopamine, serotonin, beta endorphin, all the other things. Now, how do you increase nitric oxide levels? Breathing does it, meditation does it, exercise does it, Good sex does it. Um, anything that's healthy, eating, uh, um, there are these beet chews that I get produced by the human corporation, H-U-M-A-N-N. -N. Those increase nitric oxide. I work with the company Cardio Miracle. Cardio Miracle is a powdered supplement that vastly increases nitric oxide, and it's used a lot for people who have cardiac problems. Now, the thing that was most interesting to me about nitric oxide is that the pathway to nitric oxide is the mechanism by which Viagra and Cialis work, the erectile drugs for men. Now, what we don't usually know is that the lungs are erectile tissue. So think of it at this particular time when we have more nitric oxide and we're healthier the lungs function better as well. So anything that brings you peace, anything that grounds you, anything that feels good in a sustainable way, not drugs and alcohol, um, will increase nitric oxide. And there is a kind of a, a turn-on factor. It's life force. So therefore, when you're turned on to life, and we always, in this culture, we always seem to bring it down to sexuality or pornography or whatever. But when you are wired to Eros life force, it will increase your, your feeling of libido, but it's because of your connection to life itself. Woohoo! Le yeah. Let's go from there and let's talk about from turned on to life to inner guidance. Because when we talk about yin and yang, we talk about where we've been the last 5,000 years. It has been to take the biggest steel boot that we can and squash into the ground any inner guidance we can. <laughs> yes, yeah, really true. Like a little kid. I don't like Uncle Pete. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. He's your uncle. Go give him a kiss. Oh, you know, like that. Yeah. So the sixth sense, inner guidance, should be the first sense. Thank you. It should be the one that we are developing. I just heard from a British woman who has this program where she literally teaches kids to read. She's got to get them between the ages of six and 12. Okay. She puts on a, a blindfold and teaches them how to read. That they, they see with their inner sight. It's so Cool. And she said, most adults don't even believe that it's possible. But we know uh, in the Waldorf education system, Rudolf Steiner, they talk about when the secondary teeth come in, then the neural pathways in the brain are ready for logical linear thought. However, 
It doesn't need to be at the expense of the intuitive, magical side. But our current education system, which frankly right now is up for transformation um, in a big way, but that system has only rewarded the logical linear thinking process and not the artistic, musical, things you can't explain, the ineffable, the spiritual connection, all of that stuff. So we have, we have taught people, um, if you can't prove it, it's not real, but you can only prove it in the following way. Uh, science has, in my opinion, the beauty of true science is that it's often very connected to the mystical. We think about the great scientists of all time. I always remember this guy, Kakuli, who fell asleep by the fire. He was trying to come up with why is this molecule acting like this? And he began to dream of snakes chasing each other in a circle. And then he came up with the benzene ring. Mm. Oh, wow, it's not linear, it's a ring. And so very many times, I don't know if you remember that movie, Lorenzo's Oil, yeah. uh, was an amazing movie. And again, uh, Nick Nolte was the guy. And after spending hours in the library getting, getting good information, he fell asleep. And that's when he came up with the, with the molecule that was Lorenzo's Oil to help his child. And very often you see, so it needs to be a marriage of the two. It's not one or the other. You and I both know we're far more effective because we can read and we can communicate and we can use our computers and we have a good logical brain, but that's the foundation in which we can build the rest of it. Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom is a huge tome. I have Saturn in Virgo in the third house of the mind of Gemini. So it is extraordinarily well-researched. It is extraordinary thorough, extraordinarily thorough. And it's, you know, like Virgo, get it right about health, all of that. And, you know, and the, the downside of that is I used to have classical migraine headaches, you know, like just trying to do it right, but I got over that. <laughs> I, I, I joke at the beginning about the corpus callosum, the bridge between two worlds. It is, isn't it? And I don't know if you've ever interviewed Jill Botley Taylor. I haven't. Um, okay, so her book is A Stroke of Insight. And ah, she had a, that yes. woman. And uh, yeah, apparently she has a book coming out with Hay House. So I've got to check on that. But, and, and she's now gotten all of her functions back after the stroke. But what was so interesting is that her logical, linear ability to speak about what was happening was preserved in her. So she could talk about how the universe really was. You know, that it, it's like the people who've had the near-death experiences. And I think that's what we're moving into right now is we have to move from three dimensions to fifth. We're going into a fifth-dimensional world where the spiritual and the unseen uh, will all become a real part of our world. But you can only do that when you've mastered the three-dimensional world. So the, the narrative, the worldview that we are transforming is the germ theory of disease. Like we gotta go after this, this is going to get us, this is the enemy. Into the more microbiome, mm -hmm. um, probiotic era, which is everything needs to work together, like Zach Bush's work, in concert, and then the weeds don't take over and the bacteria and the viruses don't take over because everything is working beautifully. So one is a sort of a, a death. Um, we got to go after it and kill the bad guys. So it's a death orientation to now a living orientation. We don't need to kill anything. We need to create balance. There's an amazing documentary called The Biggest Little Farm. And uh, this is a couple in California who took over a farm and it took them seven years to get back into nature. And now everything is beautifully, I mean, it's beautiful about, you know, the snakes eat the this and this eats the that and the owls come in and everything is in perfect balance. You don't try to get rid of any one thing. 
you it's all balanced. And I think that's women's wisdom as well. Because uh, think about this. You have the baby. And the baby's immune system is not really totally developed, sometimes till age six. But if you get the baby on the mother's skin right away, it'll get colonized with the mother's bacteria. And then when the baby's breastfed, the breast milk is full of antibodies for whatever germs are in the environment so the baby stays safe. And then the breast milk keeps changing its uh, formulation um, of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates throughout the time that the baby is nursing. It keeps changing to be appropriate for the nutrition of that child. So this is women's wisdom, and the body does it. What I, what I say to women is, um, okay, your body made two eyes, two kidneys, a liver, a pancreas, a brain, ears. Your body made those. You didn't even have to think about it. So chances are very good that you know what's going on with your child better than anyone else. You know. So when you tell me, and I was uh, having an interview with a well-known pediatrician, and he said, I always listen to mothers. They always know. They know way more than I do. And as a pediatrician, I wanted to hear what they had to say. This is, you know, my child's off. They're not like this, you know. But we've had... Obviously, in the last 5,000 years, we've had a lot of women be talked out of their wisdom by the medical profession. How do we cultivate that? I want to talk about inner guidance some more and cultivating that wisdom. And, and before we do that, a little an acronym that I was playing with, because what, what you're talking about, if we go to the biggest little farm or anything before that, is we are yeah. in a, I don't know another way to put it, we are a war-loving, war-based society, war, 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 go after this infection, go after those people, go after this, yes. go after that. Yes. If we flip yes. war on its head, we get to raw the natural ingredients, the way things were, the way things were meant to be, the way things can be back in harmony again. Yeah. So I want to tell you what a, a very specific example. I was watching a YouTube video of a former Marine, now a chiropractor, very into what you and I are doing, at a demonstration in Sacramento to open up California. And it was mostly, you know, women, children, pastors all around the state house in Sacramento. And he suddenly saw all these policemen come out in full riot gear. I mean, with the plexiglass shields and the billy clubs and the whole thing. And they were possibly following orders to go and get these women and children. He picked up a megaphone, a bullhorn, and he said, guys, um, you know, when I was in the Marines, if something didn't feel right as an order, that gave you permission to question your commanding officer. He goes, now, at this point, are you going to be able to go home and sleep at night if you club a young woman, a pastor, a baby? And he appealed to the hero in them. He appealed to the higher aspect of them. And it usually just takes one person standing up and then the rest will go along. So he demonstrated what is necessary, which is true masculinity is to protect and serve. It's not to kill. It is to protect and serve. And you only go after someone if they are about to kill you. So right now in this time that we're in, we need women's wisdom more than ever, and we also need men to stand up to protect and serve. So there has to be this absolute balance between the parasympathetic, rest and restore, and the sympathetic, fight or flight or freeze, because it's not one or the other. It's, it's both. It's both. And so... Uh, Mario Martinez taught me this, and he founded the Biocognitive Institute. And he said the immune system has morals. So if your innocence or that of another is being threatened, you stand up and say something, and that improves your immunity. So it's not about the spiritual bypass of love and light and, oh, this isn't happening. No, it's with compassion 
and honor and honor, you stand up and say something. What is Bruce Lipton doing at this time? Greg Braden, they're they're telling everyone at 11 o'clock every day, 11 a.m., 11 p.m., you simply visualize and meditate on the world you would like to see because the electromagnetic field of the body is very powerful. And that will bring in the new earth faster than anything else. And these are two eminent scientists. So they're not saying, you know, go kill someone. They're saying, elevate your vibration. I have on, I believe it's on Monday, Howard Martin of HeartMath, where we're going to talk about global coherence. That's so good. Yes. Yeah, that's really good. Yep. Yep. Because now remember, as you know, on 4-4-2020 or 444, there was a giant uh, global uh, meditation where over a million people meditated at exactly the same time and uh, the Schumann resonance of the earth changed. And every time we meditate, particularly in a group, but don't let that stop you, do it any time, you change the electromagnetic field of the earth. And that's what that the Global Coherence Project is all about. They're actually measuring this. So I can't wait to hear what Howard has to say, because they're the ones that have the positioning system all over planet Earth. They're literally measuring this great awakening. You mentioned psych meds. So I'm going to go there for a second, because there is this at least it appears, I mean, we're disconnected. Depression is a real deal challenge right now. And yeah. we have people on psych meds, which you and I are probably on the same opinion on this, is a real deal challenge at any point right now. Yes. Where do we go with all of this? Okay, if you look at my colleague Kelly Brogan, a psychiatrist, or my other colleague Pam Shervenek, a psychiatrist, both of them in their practices with great compassion help women feel fully, change their diet, begin to exercise from a place of self-love, and then gradually, 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 sometimes with a jeweler scale, uh, get off the medication. Um, There is, um, I think Kelly told me a book called Anatomy of a, uh, oh God, I can't remember, Anatomy of an Epidemic. And it is about how psych meds came onto the playing field of psychiatry, I think the very first study on Prozac had only 12 people and it got approved. So these are psychoactive drugs and the problem with them is they're meant to get you, be the, the bridge across the river, but most people never get off the bridge. So, yes, they can take the edge off. I remember the very first time I prescribed Prozac to a patient. She comes in a month later. And my rule was I will prescribe the psych meds as long as you see a therapist, too, so you can work on the stuff. She comes in. She goes, well, here's what I noticed. I looked out the window, and my car had a flat tire. And I didn't care. It didn't even sort of bother me. She said, don't you think I should care? (laughs) <laughs> and so she talked about how it sort of numbed her. And then we realize now how addictive they are. So that as you start to get off them, you get the same symptoms you had when you went on them. And then you're told, do you see you have a chemical imbalance and you can never get off? And that's just not true because no one has ever shown a chemical Im- imbalance. Now, what we do have very clearly We have deficiencies of folic acid and methylated B12 and vitamin D needs to be better and the omega-3 fats and all of this stuff. You need to get off crappy food. You need to get off so much sugar. Um, You need to do some exercise. Mild to moderate exercise cures 50% of mild to moderate depression. I mean, it's it's, it's so simple. And giving making everything into a CPT code, a diagnostic code, so you can get a medication, is the wrong approach. I just saw this in the medical literature, Michael, and I just couldn't believe it. There is a new drug for narcissistic personality disorder. Oh, my God. (laughs) And, you know, so, well, now it'll be, 
I mean, I, so now people are going to actually go in and say, "I'm a narcissist." <laughs> Give <laughs> right, me I the good that. stuff. <laughs> oh my god! And then I watched over the years. You know how you'd move from Prozac to Zoloft to um, Wellbutrin, and now we got Abilify, and you know, it's just it it it, it never ends. It never ends. So people go from one to the next to the next, but never quite land in their sovereignty, in their, this is me and I'm fine. Ages seven to 12, 12 and a half, I was one of the early adopters to Ritalin. Not by choice. I fought it tooth and nail. Felt like it numbed me up. Took me off at puberty in grad school, ended up back on Adderall and tried Wellbutrin and this and that and the other thing. Um, Stayed on it for my second year of grad school, took myself off, became a very, very substantial meditator, whatever you want to call, whatever I am now, and then had a stressful period of my life about 10 years ago and tried it again after being so aware Oh my God, was it awful. It was just, you, I was, that's what we're talking about here. My inner guidance system, my inner knowing, my inner everything is red flagging this stuff and saying, bad news bears don't touch with a 10 foot pole. Was necessary as a bridge. So I I believe, you know, it could help as glasses so I could see what was going on and learn how to focus. Yes. But then once I was in tune, needed to get as far away from it as I could. Yes. Isn't that like, that's, that's just it. So, yes, everything on the planet has a usefulness and is here for a reason. Just like what I say in Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom is there's a place for hysterectomies. There's a place for cesarean sections. There's a place for mammograms and mastectomies. But you don't use them as a tool in a vacuum. They need to be connected to a person. And and what I really want women to know is when you go in to the doctor or whatever, you've got to check out, does this feel right? Does this seem like the right thing to do? That's such a huge question. It's so simple. You're like, yeah, but they put billions of dollars into this drug. They put billions of dollars into research in this. And you're saying, no, it's about, does this feel right? It's like if you brought a doula in for a... uh, um, for a pregnancy or for a birth, bringing the doula in at $400 versus the billion of dollars of C-sections and everything going else, you go with the intuition. That's right. That's exactly right. But, but that is no easy task when you are in the hospital and everybody is rowing in a different direction and they just want you to go along. So that's why it's crucial to have support people. But frankly, since I wrote the first edition of the book, we have far more mother-friendly places to give birth than we used to. I mean, when I was a med student, a uh, normal pregnant woman, no, no complications, she'd have her baby and they would whisk the baby off to the newborn nursery to give it a bath and clean it up and raise its temperature. Oh, when no... What you do is you give the newborn baby to the mother and you allow the cord to pulsate till it stops if everything is safe. And she get the baby gets colonized with the mother's microbiome and it's skin to skin and the baby does not leave the mother. You you know, there's a very funny play by Karen Brody called Birth. And it starts with, I want what my dog got. (laughs) (laughs) And that's the question that Jessica keeps asking as we walk around lately, as we see all these baby deer around us. And, yeah, and we go, yeah. you know, they didn't go into the ER or a birthing center and have this and that. And yet they seem to be doing all right. What do they know <laughs> that we don't? That's right. That's exactly right. Well, they haven't been talked out of their instincts. Yeah. And we have been. And, um, you know, again, the statistic is that one in 10 births will go south. But, you know, um, Gail Peterson did studies on that way back in the 70s, early 80s. And by psychological testing, she was able to determine who would get into trouble and what the trouble would be. Wow. 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 Yeah. And, And now, again, this is the sort of thing I would study. I wouldn't study 
you know, more ways to monitor the baby as though an accident was going to happen at any moment. And by the way, I happened to be a resident when uh, fetal monitoring came in and I watched the C-section rate soar overnight because nobody knew how to interpret the monitor strip. And to this day, we don't have a single study showing that the fetal monitor does anything to improve outcome. It just increases the C-section rate and becomes... Um, a way that the woman is separated from herself. You walk into the room, how are you doing? Everybody looks at the monitor. But the monitor's hooked up to a baby and a woman. So what is then, before we begin to wind this down, this has been really, really fun, Chris, what's the emotional digestive system? That is where you simply need to stay in tune with your feelings and understand where they are in the body. They're in the third emotional center. They're in the third chakra. One sense of um, passion, purpose, and self-esteem. Now, the gut has more neurotransmitters in it than the brain, okay? The, The molecules that the brain makes when it thinks, there are more of those produced in the gut than any other place. So, your sense of personal power, self-esteem, sense of responsibility is your not only your emotional digestive system, it will absolutely affect your digestive system of your food. And if you are, we've all had that feeling of too stressed to eat or too stressed to not eat so that we are stress eating. And you know, there's all these jokes going on about the COVID-15, you know, the... Could be the <laughs> COVID-50, boy, by the time we're done with this. <laughs> I know, I know. And um, so therefore, when you, you find out um, what's eating you, mm-hmm. not what you're eating, what's eating you. Now, Zach Bush, I just learned something incredible. And he said, when the microbiome becomes balanced, people get better boundaries. Like people who just couldn't get out of a codependent relationship, get their microbiome balanced through the right probiotics, through the right diet, through fermented foods, and suddenly they have boundaries. Isn't that interesting? That's very cool. Well, what you're wearing on the inside becomes how you affect or how you tread through the world on the outside. And that's so important because you and I have both had clients. Anybody who's listening to this is, this goes back to your book on energy vampires, is an empath, is sensitive. Yeah. And, and we are the ones that get steam rolled over until we learn how to set those boundaries. And so if we're not stable on our own feet health-wise, how are we able to stand up for ourselves? We can't accept that sometimes when you are, and Eckhart Tolle talks about this, when your pain body has just gotten, you've suffered so much. And that's what happened to him. He suddenly went to sleep and woke up Eckhart Tolle. He said, when the pain body gets really bad, it will sometimes finally push you into who you really are. And frankly, I think that's what's happening to the whole planet. That is exactly what I'm thinking as well. This is a slow grind until something inside of us goes, Dink! enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> so before we dive into a meditation, what do you want to leave people with today? Oh, I want them to leave with great hope that where we are heading is better than anything you could ever imagine. It is the transformation of our educational system, our transportation system, our medical system. That's what we're in the middle of. And I want people to think about it as being like uh, just before being fully dilated in labor. You want to get out. You want to. Every woman goes, I'm done. I'm not doing this. I'm out of here. And then the cervix gets fully dilated and it's time to push. We're not quite time to push, but I think we will be uh, this summer. And we also have what's going on, a very interesting Pluto transit so that everybody is in a cocoon. We are being trans, we're, we're being made into butterflies, but first the caterpillar turns into goo 
And so we don't even know who we are, but we will come out of this cocoon, astrologer Ann Ortley tells us, by the winter solstice, December 21st, 2020. Woohoo! And and I love that analogy. I've been calling it butterfly training school. And you can't get the butterfly out early. You need it to I'll give it time <laughs> for the metamorphosis. That's right. Exactly right. Yes. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Would you mind leading us in a uh, whatever you're called to today? Yes, let's do this. Okay, let's let's do this. Okay, so everybody, I want you to just uh, sit there and let's take a breath in through the nose. And let it out all the way through the nose. You can do through the mouth if you want. It's better, I think, if we can train ourselves through the nose. And all the way out. We're slowing everything down. See the mainstream news falling off your shoulders, like make your body into Teflon, and everything just sort of slides off. And now, like we did earlier today, I want you to see your feet connected to two big tap roots right into the molten center of the earth where there are big, big crystals. Okay, and take another breath. And now I want you to see a ring around your feet that is about as big as the arm span. So we have a reverse ice cream cone with the point in the center of the earth and then the cone coming up around your feet in a circle. Now what I'd like you to do is see the energy from the center of the earth as an amber liquid with little bubbles and this is coming up slowly, 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 and filling up an orb of energy around your whole body so that you have the cone in the earth up around your feet. Now you can feel that liquidy, that liquidy essence from Mother Earth around your feet. And now it's filling up that whole cone, going up your feet, your ankles, your calves, your knees, filling up all around you in a cone, the ice cream part like as big around as your arm span. Now we're up to the hips. Now the abdomen, your whole chest area, arms, neck, coming up around your head, over your head, and I want you to feel that life force, that tingling in your feet, everywhere in your body. Now it's all the way up above your head, and you're now, you're now sitting in the middle of an ice cream cone of the Earth's energy, keeping you perfectly grounded, perfectly safe. And know that once you've done this, The only thing you need to do in the morning is just top it off. And you can always be completely grounded. And from that place, you're going to know what activity to engage in, what not. And see yourself in this protected envelope with a membrane all around it. And there you are in this beautiful, beautiful energy of the earth. She is your mother. She knows what you need. She knows how to provide it. Take another breath in. All the way out. Put your hands up above your head and then press them down along your sides, feeling your shoulder blades, feeling your heart right in the front and in the back. Radiate out that cone of energy, front, back, sides, up, down, your whole body, and go out into the world in that cocoon of energy and be a gift to everyone you meet. Another deep breath. 
and open your eyes. <laughs> you brought me back to childhood and I couldn't get out of it for the entire meditation. Stuck oh, thinking good. about an ice cream truck drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's it had this great. chewy ice I, 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 I can't eat ice cream. Maybe we can change that. Maybe that's a limiting belief. Historically speaking, I cannot have not been able to eat ice cream. There, we'll put right. it like that. Cancel, cancel, I, I clear. But right. um, that drumstick cone was oh so. Have it on the beach with your ice cream. It was oh so good. I know. I know. It's true. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been so, so beautiful, so, so needed. And and if you're listening to this, this is one heck of a challenging, interesting time, but we can approach it with love. And I think we that's can. what we did today is we really approached it with love. And I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Where can people go, Chris, to find your beautiful book and to find out more? Uh, they can get the book on Amazon, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom. They can go to my website, drnorthrop.com, sign up for my e-news, and then follow me on social media, Dr. Christian Northrup, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get women's bodies, women's wisdom, and begin rediscovering the secret to your health and wisdom today and shine bright. Woohoo! Awesome, 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 Chris. Great. Good. If you're watching this, then you are a light worker. You're a light warrior, and I want to help. We offer everything from boot camps, mini masterclasses, full on masterminds, and private one on one coaching with me. To find out more about our upcoming courses, simply visit inspirenationuniversity.com or click on the links below. And to find out more about coaching, simply visit inspirenationuniversity.com backslash coaching. We also have weekly YouTube live events with me where you can ask me your questions live and YouTube premieres featuring me and our guests. Simply subscribe below and click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows. I just had the most amazing interview with Dr. Christian Northup on greater health, greater wisdom, and on listening to your body. To check out more incredible healthful interviews, Click here, subscribe below, be sure to click on that bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows, YouTube premieres, and YouTube lives with me. Join us for our boot camps by clicking on that link below. And if you like this, leave your comments and give us a huge, huge thumbs up. Love you guys so, so much. Shine bright. Woohoo!